All right, this is recording on the Sony a6500. I just got this camera, finally making that jump from Canon to Sony. I would say I'm somewhere in between because I'm using a Canon 40 millimeter EF lens with the Sigma MC11 adapter on the Sony a6500. So I'm in transition. And of course I'll still shoot with the Canon as well because I still have my 60D, but this is me shooting on the a6500 I'm using the monitor here to, uh, well, to monitor what I'm shooting. One of the downsides of the a6500, it doesn't have the fully articulating screen, so I can't just pop out the screen and see it, which is a problem. One of the things I wanted to test was the clean HDMI. If it was a clean HDMI, I'm out. So you see no information on the screen that you would see on the back of the LCD. So that seems to be working, I think, that means I could live stream with this camera if I wanted to, but I don't know if you'd want to do that given the known issues with overheating. I did run an overheating test, just an initial overheating test, normal conditions. Uh, check out instagram.com slash podcast helper. You can see the results of that test. It did well. It shot the entire 30 minute limit uh, and the battery actually went out before the camera even had a chance to overheat and I didn't even have the extended temperature option enabled on the camera. So I still have that to go to as well. So hopefully that holds up and this camera doesn't overheat when I'm doing things like shooting YouTube video. I'm also checking out this monitor because on my 60D, I couldn't really use this because the resolution, uh, the 60D didn't, sh didn't send its full HD resolution. So this wasn't much help, but this gives me options for peaking, which I can see if I'm in focus and I get false color here, and you can see that blue is pretty much indicating everything is exposed properly. So some cool options on this ICANN VK7i monitor that I have, which I finally get to use, I bought a long time ago, but I finally get to use it with the Sony a6500, and that's one of many reasons I went to Sony. Of course, there's a whole bunch of downsides as well, the flip screen being a huge one that I talked about, so I'm working on getting past that one of the things I can do is monitor with my iPhone. It doesn't give you very many options, but I could see what I'm doing like on this iCan when I'm not in the studio. If I happen to be in front of the camera, I can actually tell basically what my composition is and I can start stop record, but I can't hit focus. So I'll talk more about that later. Right now I'm grabbing quick audio. I'm using the Rode VideoMic Pro attached to the Sony and I don't get audio levels on here. So one of the weird ways I had to set that up was to put the Rode VideoMic Pro backwards while I could see the audio levels on the camera and then dial in my audio levels that way. So I am a good three feet from the camera. The audio is not going to be probably that good. Lots of reverb in this room, but that's what it sounds like with hopefully the right settings. I'll probably do some post-production to bring up that level. You kind of always have to do that, probably always should but this is the Sony a6500 4K, not the highest bit rate, I need a faster card for that, but 60 megabits per second instead of 100, 24 frames, and I'm using the PP5, which is a flat picture style. It's not completely flat like S-Log2, maybe it's S-Log2 and then there's S-Log3. I'll be doing more on that as well but it's the PP5 and I will probably do a little color grading by the time you're seeing this as well. So just a real quick test, Sony a6500, it's here, I'm using it. Well, I just started using it. Ask your questions in the comments. I will see you pretty soon with more 6500 stuff and Canon as well. See you next time. Lots of pointing, stop pointing. See you next time. See you next time. <laughs>